The A7 does not get too in-depth when it comes to the AC compressor. For example, you don't have to know how to rebuild a variable displacement compressor. The questions will be on basic information. The line going to the compressor is called the suction line. It comes from the evaporator. And the line exiting the compressor is called the discharge line. The suction line contains low pressure, low temperature vapor, and should be cool to the touch when the AC system is on. The discharge line contains high pressure, high temperature vapor, and should be hot to the touch when the AC system is on. The compressor has a few system devices that protect it from damage when the system reaches too high of a pressure or very low pressure. The first that can be used are pressure switches. There's one on the low side, it controls clutch engagement and will open and disengage the clutch when the low side pressure falls too low. There's another pressure switch on the high side, it controls clutch engagement and will disengage the clutch when the high side pressure gets too high. If the high side pressure does get too high, there's also a pressure relief valve that will vent these excess pressures. The pressure switches have two wires and can be removed without recovering the refrigerant if they thread onto a straighter valve. Newer vehicles commonly have pressure sensors. They are also called pressure transducers. They work similar to pressure switches as they can control clutch engagement when the respective side falls too short or reaches too high. One of those wires receives a 5 volt reference. There's also the evaporator temperature sensor. These are used with fixed displacement compressors. And this input is used to switch the compressor clutch on and off. Think of it as a newer version of the cycling clutch orifice tube system. This sensor also receives a 5 volt reference. To test the pressure sensors, you simply compare its scan tool PID to the pressure on a manifold gauge that is hooked up to the AC system. If any of the aforementioned sensors become defective, they can prevent the compressor clutch from engaging. Which of these would not prevent the clutch from engaging? A, a bad ground. B, defective clutch coil. C, the ECT too high. Or D, a bad diode. Now here's the same question, but with different answers. Which of these will not prevent the clutch from engaging? A. Low battery voltage B. High resistance in the power side C. A stuck blendor or D. IAT input too low The clutch has a specified air gap. The specification for this vehicle is between 14 and 30 thousandths of an inch. Here we have a non-magnetic filler gauge 23 thousandths and 24 thousandths. 23 thousandths fits in snugly, while the 24 thousandths is having a hard time going in. I have to jam it in there. The air gap is 23 thousandths. We are within specifications. If the gap is under specifications, the clutch can make a scraping noise when engaged. This can also overheat the clutch coil. If the air gap is over specification, the clutch can slip when engaged. To change the air gap, you will have to add or remove shims. On most compressors, you can simply remove the clutch hub. Just remove the center bolt. You may need to use a clutch holding tool or you can use an impact. From there, the clutch hub simply slides off and careful not to drop the shims. At this point, you can add or remove shims to adjust the air gap. There's another shim right there hanging on. Expect to see many wiring diagrams. Here's one of an AC system that uses pressure switches. Here's the PCM, here referred to as VCM. And here's the compressor clutch. If the AC is requested and we get near battery voltage here and the ground is good, but the clutch won't engage, what is the most likely cause? What would happen if there was too much corrosion at this point? 
say it had a voltage drop of 3 volts. And what would happen if the high pressure cutoff switch was stuck open? Tune in to video number 3, we will talk about the condenser and other related components.